Hello, I'm Dwight Norris of FishNetwork.com, and here I am at my home on the screen and on my computer screen, both at the same time, which is something new. Just trying this out, see how you like it. Today we're going to be talking about finding fish, mainly bass, using topographic maps like this digital one done by the Charles River Alliance of Boaters and the MIT MIT Sea Grant College program, which is super cool. I think they last charted this in 2017 during the summer. They just drop a line in the water and they measure it and they do it everywhere until they figure out what's going on under the water. It's probably pretty time intensive, but people like myself appreciate it. Um, let's first talk about where I fish locally. And that's right here the Charles River Esplanade. You probably remember this from some of my videos if you've been watching. If not, thank you for showing up and being here now. I'd been looking for the bass, or really any fish, since it turned cold, right around like 20 degrees or so, and I just couldn't find them. I didn't know where they are, and I couldn't cast anywhere, and I'm starting to see why. This area from here to here doesn't look like a long distance but if you look at what my body size would be from right here you can attest I, I can probably only reach this edge of this zone here and I couldn't really get far and I was using four ounce weight with some worms and I got nothing and so I went over here and I knew there was a hole here but I still couldn't reach it and I went down all the way to this railroad place where you can fish some bridge abutments and I still had no action. There was just not steep enough drops. The water was going too fast through here and I couldn't find anything. But a great um, viewer of my channel in the comments gave me a tip and I found the perch. And I found the yellow perch. The yellow perch, the white perch, and I even caught a bluegill which is super cool. But Sorry. There were no bass bites. But as you can see, it's 15 feet in this canal. It's called the Broad Canal. And it's right next to MIT, which is this purple area. It says Kendall Square, and there's the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is one of the people who made this, which is why I made it all special and purple. Super cool. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. If you see this, Fishing Network gives you a thumbs up. Great job. Uh, while you're at it, go down to the go down to this broad uh, canal. It is awesome. Probably year-round. 15 feet is great. And there's some ice forming. It's pretty much formed all the way across to here, this area. That's where I had a video just a couple of videos ago and I kind of fished this area really close to the walkway and right here this building was making a shadow across the water and right on that shadow where it went light to dark I was catching some much larger perch much and that a really big bluegill there every other spot was a smaller fish hiding under hiding under this uh, walkway and the bigger fish were sitting here for some reason. I think that's the deepest point. I couldn't cast near the uh, the abutments, and it's like a it's like a piling wood pilings are right here because it's just covering ice. I, I don't have like a you know a thirty pound stone to throw in there and break the ice so I can actually ice fish. Maybe next time. So where are the bass? You're wondering. No, no, they're probably here. Actually, not on that side. It's too brackish water right there. It's too salty. Because right here, boom, that's that's the ocean, basically. That's the ocean. It goes right out to the... Uh, right out to the harbor, where we know it's salty. So, you really want to stay on this side of, of the uh, river and go up. They will be at the uh, Esplanade, but once it gets colder, they're looking for a deeper hole. So I, I think it could be some right here. And maybe hanging around here. But they want to stay out of the current. They don't want to work hard. So they'll go deep 
or they'll go hide behind something. So I wondered, where could a bass hide? Where would they be? And lo and behold, Eric Harrison and Greg Miner both were right. They're on these deep holes right next to the bridge abutments. And right next to the bridge abutments on the river further in near close to the fresher water are holes. And they're sitting there out of reach because you can't fish from the bridge and you can't cast too far. Here is a possibility to cast decently far. It's around 10 feet. Not quite optimal what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is more of this, a 12. And there's a little bit of tidal flow from the Charles River. Maybe not where you live. Maybe you don't even have a river. You can just look for the deepest hole in the lake or the pond or wherever else that you're fishing. But when the water's moving, you have to find places where the water isn't moving that much and it's also deep. Fish are lazy, especially the big ones. They get bigger, they get smarter, and they know how to get bait and get food while not working that much. While the small ones are at the top, chasing the schools, jumping out of the water, going crazy, making a, making all the fishermen super happy. Oh man, the fish are biting today and they hit the buzz baits and the poppers on the top border and it's mostly smaller fish up there going after the bay fish so they're catching smaller ones. But where the big ones are are on the sides and down below waiting for the injured minnows that weren't quite caught by all the, the youngsters to float down and they're like, oh, and then that big behemoth just comes up and sucks them up. That's where I want to be fishing. But when you're ice fishing, I mean, well, fishing in the cold and looking really hard for fish that are very sluggish, even more sluggish than normal, you have to take certain measures. So, this is the Western Ave Bridge. And it continues up. And here we are, the John W. Weeks Bridge, which is nice. It's 12 here. And it's not, it, as you see, it's a really, a really steep drop here on this side. This is definitely a side that you want to fish, and you want to see if you can get to this point. I'm not exactly sure what it takes to get there. We'll look at another map. We might even, yeah, we'll look at another map and see exactly what that looks like here in a, a little bit. And there's some other uh, bridges around here that look a little awkward. Why is there a hole here? It has something to do with the flow of the water and the way it was cut. But because of the great data, I know that the deepest part isn't right under the bridge next to the abutment. It's actually behind it. And the steep part is on... Um, I'm not sure what side this is but it, it's on this side it's the side that this is actually a bike path right here which is primarily how I'm going to access it I ride my bike to work when it's good weather right now I'm doing some maintenance on my bike and when I get it moving again I'm gonna do a little commuting fishing I'm gonna stop hit some spots like these and see what happens and then I'll report it back to you I actually probably just take my video camera with me just to see what happens now we go up here and we see a long stretch down to this hole. I believe the water is cutting around this corner and actually shaping the water when it rips around here and making this hole. That, I'm not sure how you would pinpoint the exact spot where the fish are, but they're definitely in this area as well. It might be going a little too fast, so they might be on this edge so they can get easy access to the depths, but also go to the shallows when it's warm. But I think the best spot there is right now is next to the Mount Auburn Hospital. It's also a uh, one of the uh, the row houses for the they call it crew. Those long skinny boats that they uh, they row on. We probably saw it in that movie made by made for uh, Facebook. I think it's I think it's called Facebook. And the two brothers that try to sue them and do it successfully eventually. That's what they're good at, and that's one of those places. But right here is an 18 foot hole. It goes from three to six and then boom, 18. Look how, sh this could be a sharper drop off, but it just goes so deep 
Once you get off the six foot ledge, it just drops 12 feet. I can almost guarantee there's a fish right there. I don't know what kind, but I think because it's more fresh water and what I've caught in the past, I've caught, I've caught yellow perch in like six feet of water in the middle where there's really nothing. I'll show you where that is. Oh, it's a little further away. I'll show you in a minute. But right here, this is obviously the, the deepest hole and it, it doesn't go back that far is because it's behind an abutment. The middle abutment, which is probably the, the I think it's the only abutment on this one because it's barely long enough to need one. It slows it enough and that what that uh that hole just formed. And uh, I'm that's gonna be my number one location. So if you have like a a topographic map in your area for rivers or lakes or whatever wherever you fish you should try to access it and use it effectively down here there are some more holes strip down the middle and there's some similar things here you see right past the uh, the two abutments there's elongated areas for drops and go past the old Home Depot the Arsenal in Watertown and let's skip over oh well I'll talk about this area first you might have some areas where the river breaks off somewhere not like that canal we had that's a complete break off and it's deep that's a very nice place to fish but some areas are this generally shallow and you're like hmm there's nothing here man it's too cold for any fish to be chilling out here hmm not quite not quite true this island actually stops the water it's a slow area and when you slow down the water even if it's shallow and you have structure like the the boats sitting here some of them are actually still sitting in the water most of them are in this area and they're covered up with the plastic you have some some pretty cool stuff the fish like a uh, yellow perch and white perch and even bass will come to hang out there sometimes in the middle of the day because it's warmer and sometimes just for good I've been quite shocked of what I've caught I remember the first time I went out there and let me just show you I'd fish right here with my with my son and I'd cast out to right about here or so I always see these boats I'd cast out as far as I can it's like a buoy sitting in the water here and this there's, there's hydrilla underwater which is primarily what yellow perch like to hide in they like to stay generally shallow during the winter that's one another re reason I like yellow perch and they like underwater grasses and that's apparently right here in the middle of this a whole bunch of grass near the shore it's all rocks and mud but every time I cast in the middle I come back with a piece of grass I, I don't want to pull that back to grass but it confirms to me that that's why they're there and I cast there boom as soon as it hits the bottom yellow perch bite so I found them they're they're pretty prominent in the river but where are the bass but I could take a little longer walk or ride I mean with my car and try out this area here on the back end there's I don't know why it went so far to say 3.6 and 3.1 right next to this three uh, foot sandbar uh, not sure why that's there this island is uninhabitable there might be something on it but I think it's mostly marsh and some trees I'm not even sure why it exists but the marina, I mean the um, the Watertown Yacht Club owns this whole area. That's some pretty cool stuff. So now that I've thoroughly talked about my river, what about your river? Do you think you can kind of convey your knowledge from a topographic map to how you can catch fish in this super cold weather? Maybe you're not an ice fisherman and you thought about trying it. Read up on it. I don't know everything about it I don't have any of the tools I've seen a lot of stuff on Craigslist for sale or for free just like giving it away to like t they're trying to freeze in and you know drinking shots of something just so they can stay warm which you know that's not a bad idea 
you're out there alone, you know, got the radio going or, you know, some music going, got some some beer, some some liquor, some wine, whatever, you know, whatever your fancy is and, you know, have some good time alone. Some people need that time alone. I think I'm one of those people. But I'm going to give it a try uh, if it gets cold enough. The weather's been a little odd. I'm not sure where it will be good to do that near me. Up north in Maine and northern New Hampshire and Vermont area, it'll get cold enough. I've, I've seen people while visiting friends, like like tens of people, tens of 20, not 100, but like 50 people on the ice with their trucks, with the tents, making a bonfire almost. I'm like, you can make a fire on the ice and it won't melt? Crazy. But it, it was crazy cold, like minus 15 or so. But I might try it out if I can find some place that has at least four inches of ice. So you have to measure it. It needs to be four inches. Otherwise, boop. No, don't go. Don't take the chance. It's too many news reports about people falling in and pets falling in and people going after people falling in and bad things happen. So avoid that at all costs. So let's go over to this secondary uh, map, which is actually powered by Google Maps. I think this one might... I don't think this one is powered by Google Maps. This one is powered by uh, Esri, which I've heard before, but I'm not quite sure what it is. But it's powered by Esri, and it uses a uh, Garmin and the USGS, which is you know good stuff. This one is actually powered by Google Maps. It shows the topography, but not the numbers. It shows the contour lines and all that cool stuff. And it uses their data. It's not quite perfect because, uh, well, yeah, it's now underwater on the river, oh, on the on the bridge, which is weird. Did that happen everywhere? Yeah, this one too. Weird. Anyway, this is an option as well. If you want all this other information here, it's kind of like an overlay, I believe, and they didn't do it very well. They show most of the important parts. Um, hmm. How do you get to these links? If you actually search this crab and MIT Sea Grant, this is going to pop up. Or they obviously didn't do it for your area. And, th and because they didn't, maybe you're going to have to buy your own topographic map. And I know a good place to do that. A guy down in Newburgh, North Carolina as a whoa obviously I was on the web page too long here we go <laughs> uh, Captain Seagulls without an A nautical sport fishing charts and it looks like he has most states Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, J Jersey I'm not gonna say well but he has Massachusetts he has uh, stuff for sharks, all the fishes. Just realize that's incorrect. All the fish. <laughs> um, I'll leave that be. Here's Martha's Vineyard. I don't go around there too often. Here's Buzzards Bay. I don't get a chance to fish down there. Ah, Boston Harbor. Let's see if we can take a closer look. I thought I could get into this, but uh, here we go. Yes. Boom. As you can see here, there's a lot of information about the Boston Harbor, the nautical charts, and maybe you can zoom in. Is it going to be blurry? Oh. Obviously, it doesn't want you just printing this out. But They'll print it out for you. They'll put it in some, um, some nice um, laminate. And you can take it with you if you're going anywhere in the Boston Harbor. There are some people that actually do that because of the tidal charts and exactly where they want to fish from the boat or from shore. Many people will go to sev several of the islands and actually cast into the water if they know the spot. So you know where the fish are, are coming by, Spe specifically the uh, striper 
and the cod during the sp- I think the cod during the spring, the early spring, they're around, and the striper come in during uh, May, all the way t- to like September, and then the cod are a spring the fall thing too. Is that flounder right? Yeah, the flounder, the winter flounder, then the summer flounder, or or vice versa. I'm not sure which goes first. There's some information online about that. I'll get some more inf- information about that later. Maybe even catch one. Hmm. But you can use that. Go to the islands. Use the uh, the harbor ferry, and just go to the island. Do your research. Get the timing right for the tides. Cast your line in from the island. Catch your fish. Put it in a bucket. Put it in a bag. Whatever you have. Go back on the boat. Don't even have to own one. Get help the uh, local transportation. Boom! Right back to your house. Striped bass for dinner, fresh, not from someone else. You don't know where it came from. You put your lure in a line. You put your lure in the water. You caught the fish. You take the fish home. You got it. You fillet it. You cook it. A to Z. So, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say about this. I kind of got caught in a tangent about between bass and all the other fish available, but. I really just wanted to show off all the great work from Crab and MIT and how useful it can be if you have something like that in your area. It's a digital topographic map. And you can use these these ones right here on Captain Seagulls for your local area if it's available. I think he does mostly he does he has sea areas. So there might be ones for rivers too. Yeah, you should actually check out your local um state website for their fishing game where you get your licenses they actually have stuff like this available or they know where that's available from sometimes it's not on the web and you actually have to talk to them and ask them yes yeah, so you have to talk to the the government officials to get information that will help you go fishing but it could be something that makes you look like a rock star fisherman so it's very important I'll ask, I'll, lastly, I'll talk about the website. Here's my little pre-video, fishingnetwork.com. Just to remind you to go to the website, go down below on this YouTube video, subscribe if you like it, like it if you like it, leave a comment, tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, tell me what you, what you want to change, give me uh, any kind of comments that you have, suggestions like um, one of the other viewers, if you know where the bass are, Please tell me so I can go there, fish it, and show everybody. Everybody's not on the Charles River, obviously. But some people just want to catch a fish here and there. Also, if you can go here and get my 10-step process to go fishing at work PDF, completely free. Provide your email address. It will be yours and sent to you right through your email. And the same thing is available for how to catch more bass. Just below my little blog roll there. There's all this great stuff in it. I've learned learned over a long time. And you have to do the same thing. And it's all yours. Awesome. So I'll just leave this like that. And watch out for holes. Whoa! <laughs> so I'm Dwight Norris, Fish Network, and I just want to tell you to remember to go out there and go fishing no matter the environment or the issues or maybe even not knowing how to or where to fish properly for the game fish that you want to go after. It's all available. Some of it's online, some of it's not, and you have to actually buy it or ask people for information. It's okay. People wanna people want to help generally help you. So just be a little brave and just ask the question. Hey, dude, do you know where the bass are? It's a real question. Do you know where the bass are? I'm not generally a, a winter fisherman, but I'm trying to be. And I'm doing the work. So you do the work, too.